stray too much beyond the seven minute, please. Liz Truss. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I'm not speaking this debate today because I love smoking, although I have voted against every single smoking prohibition since I've been a Member of Parliament. The reason I'm speaking today is I am very concerned that this policy putting, put, being put forward is emblematic of a technocratic establishment in this country that wants to limit people's freedom. And I think that is a problem. I will not give way to the Honourable Lady. I will not give way. I'll give away exactly as much opportunity as the opposition gave me to talk about my private members' bill, which I'll come on to later in this speech. But the problem is, the instinct of this establishment, and which is reflected by a cross-party consensus today in today's chamber, is to believe that they, that the government, are better at making decisions for people than people themselves. And I absolutely agree that that is true for the under-18s. It is very important, until people have decision-making capability while they are growing up, that we protect them. But I think the whole idea that we can protect adults from themselves is hugely problematic, and it effectively infantilises people. And that is what has been going on. And what we're seeing is we're seeing not just on tobacco, but also on sugar, also on alcohol, also on meat, a group of people who want to push an agenda which is about limiting people's personal freedom. Yeah. And I think that is fundamentally yeah. wrong. Yeah. Yep. I go out canvassing a lot in my Norfolk constituency, and people raise all kinds of issues with me on the doorstep. They're concerned about immigration. They're concerned about the cost of energy. They're concerned about the rise of China. They want to support Ukraine. Not a single voter has ever said to me, my big concern is adults smoking. So this proposal has not come from people from our constituents talking to us. It has come from a group of people who, by and large, work in a professional capacity pushing these policies. And I know back when the Right Honourable Member for Suffolk Coastal was Health Secretary that this proposal was sitting on her desk. So this is not new. And I'm very pleased to say she put the proposal in the bin. But unfortunately, since then, it seems to have been pulled out of the bin and resuscitated. And my real fear is that this is not the final stage that the health police want to push. They are the health police. They are the health police, and people are concerned about this. They want to be able to make their own decisions about what they eat, what they drink, and how they enjoy themselves. And I suggest, if the Honourable Gentleman doesn't understand that, he starts listening to the public. Now, what I also find extraordinary, what I also find extraordinary, Mr Deputy Speaker, is the fact that almost four weeks ago, I put a private member's bill to Parliament to ban the under-18s from being able to access puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones in the private sector and on the National Health Service. Now, what we know is that children have been taking these drugs and it's had life-changing effects on them. It's prevented them having their own children. It's created problems with their physique and their bodies. It has damaged their health. Not only did the Labour Party not support my private member's bill, Mr Deputy Speaker, they actually talked and filibustered and they talked about ferrets so much that I was not even able to speak. These are the same people who were saying that we should, in the future, be banning cigarettes for 30-year-olds 
And yet they won't vote to ban puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones for the under-18s. Now, thank goodness that Hilary Cass has come forward with her report, and I welcome the Health Secretary's support for that. But this is what we should be legislating on. We should be legislating on implementing the recommendations in the Hilary Cass support report to prevent real danger to our children, rather than a vir virtue signalling piece of legislation about protecting adults from themselves in the future. Now, I'm afraid there are too many members of Parliament who have gone along with this orthodoxy. And I'm not surprised that that is the case on the Labour benches and the Liberal Democrat benches. They generally don't support freedom. They believe the government knows best, the state knows best. We understand that. But I am disappointed that a Conservative government is bringing forward this bill. The only other country in the world where such a bill was brought forward was New Zealand under a very left-wing Prime Minister, and that bill has now been reversed under the new Conservative government in New Zealand. And I have a message for my colleagues on this side of the House. If people want to vote for finger-wagging, nannying control freaks, there are plenty of them to choose from on the benches opposite. And that's the way they will vote. And if people want to have control over their lives, if they want to have freedom, that is why they vote Conservative. And we have to stand, we have to stand by our principles and our ideals, even if it doesn't... No, I'm not giving way to the party opposite that filibustered my bill and stopped us taking action to protect children. That was a disgrace. Will my right uncle bring you away? I will. I, I, I agree. My right uncle bring you away. Did she hear 